Hi guys, today I want to talk about the ideal setup for tandem flights and to your and my surprise the ideal seems to be the one that is the most complicated, the most heavy, most uncomfortable for the pilot and probably even most expensive. Welcome to our classroom, Insights into Paramotor Geometry. In this series, we cover all aspects of paramotor design and construction, so you can learn what is the best paramotor for you. Today's topic is about tandem setup. I originally didn't really plan to talk about this, but it was requested by one of you in the comments. So for the future, if you have a question that we haven't covered in our classroom, please don't hesitate to send me an email or write a comment and ask for it. If I'm capable to answer, I would happily do so. So the first option you could think of are standard spreaders used for for paragliding um, tandem, so without motor. There are simple, easy to use, lightweight and very cheap, yet they are useless for paramotor use. So the first and the major problem with these kind of spreaders for paramotor tandem use is that the distance between me as a pilot and the passenger is just way too short. While this is not a big deal in flight, it is a big deal in, uh, in the takeoff phase. Uh, takeoff with a paraglider off the mountain is short, you make few steps and you're off the ground gaining speed and, and enjoying the flight. With a paramotor it's completely different, you need to run fast and long. Now the passenger He's pretty unlimited in running, but me as a pilot, I have the, if I have the passenger right in front of me with the distance very short, I just can't, I just don't have the room for my legs to run properly. So the first thing uh, you seek with, with tandem spreaders for paramotor uh, flights is a longer distance. You literally need to double the distance. So somewhere around 50 to 75 centimeters would be would be the minimum. Uh, well, it's obvious. The longer, the better it gets. Now, why can't you make it one meter? I will explain that right now. So the very easy solution for paramotor use for tandem spreaders is just to make them longer and the longer the better. So if it would be 100 centimeters, I would have plenty room to run. It would be just really safe and enjoyable. Now, the problem is the longer the, this distance is, the wider the angle at the, at the top carabiner gets. I'm talking about this angle here that spreads the load uh, onto front and back. Without making the, all the mathematics too complicated, I will skip the formulas and here is the result. If you have two parallel ropes, the load of 100 kilo is distributed evenly onto both 50 to 50. But as you increase the angle, suddenly the, the sum of the load on each rope is actually higher than the load itself and the load increases dramatically with the larger the angle is. So uh, with 120 degrees, uh, despite the total load is 100 kilogram, you have 100 here and 100 there, so the total load is 200 and it continues. Total load of 100 kilogram with the angle of 170 degrees would cause that both ropes would be loaded by more than 500 kilograms, that is more than 1,100 kilograms in total load on that rope. That load increases dramatically the larger the, the angle gets. And in the theoretical case, if there would be 180 degrees angle, that load would be actually infinite. It's just not possible. Now, this was kind of a rope, uh, rope vector theory, but in our case, uh, 
it's just upside down. So let's get back to the tandem spreaders. This is some quick calculation on the load distribution if the angle is 120 degrees. So uh, here's the pilot. Let's assume the total weight on one, 125 kilograms. That would be roughly me with a, with a Monster Plus engine on my back. And a passenger, 75 kilograms. Carabiner needs to be placed uh, to uh, equalize the load distribution. So the higher the load, the, lo the shorter the lever. So the carabiner is closer to me because uh, 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 me and the paramotor are heavier than that. Well, with these vectors, you can see that this load gets, uh, gets split into tensioning the rope and compressing the, the spreader bar. So the bar is there only to keep me and, uh, and the passenger apart. Let's take these spreaders as an example. There are two straps, but only one goes through the carabiner. So it's only this one holding the weight, uh, carrying the weight and the load on the, of, the, of the pilot and the passenger. My estimate would be that this strap has a load capacity of about 2,500 kilograms. Obviously, Ozone would know better. Uh, now, 2,500 would be sufficient because with this degree that it's maybe even even less than 120 you have sufficient safety margin so you can overload let's say with a load of 400 uh, you have maybe uh, a safety margin by factor of six to seven uh, with this but if the angle would be way lower if you would just make this bar longer and increase the uh, the angle at the carabiner you suddenly would figure out that your safety margin is not six it's not a multiple of six but maybe only three which means that in a deep spiral or in a, in a massive uh, reopening after a collapse you can encounter g-forces like three or four and easily and the spreaders would break. The strap would actually break. One simple solution is doubling the strap. Instead of one strap going through the carabiner, you would put two. But even with two straps, with two, uh, 4,000 kilograms, you only have five Gs. Now the gliders are tested for eight and 10 Gs. Paramotors are tested for 15 Gs. And the reason is that if it's eight, 10 or 15 when it's new, let's hope it's at least five when it's when it's a little older worn out so the load distribution vector mathematics is the reason why you cannot just simply make a standard paragliding uh, tandem bars longer you have to proportionally make it larger which means that not only the distance between passenger and pilot gets longer but also the main carabiner gets higher and you as a pilot have a bad reach for 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 the brakes this is especially emphasized with the, with the paramotors with high suspension system where the your own carabiner is not here but it's already pretty high and then you need to reach even higher for the for the tandem for the tandem glider uh, the second main issue with these kind of spreaders a part of the distance needed for running is uh, also the lack of ability to guide the passenger. As said, with paragliding takeoffs of the hill, the takeoff run is pretty short and you mostly have some headwind and you can steer the glider effectively with the brakes. On the paramotor, especially with low wind, it's not the case. And sometimes if the glider doesn't come up at 12, but let's say it comes at, at one o'clock, you need to step aside to run under the glider, make corrections. With uh, these kind of uh, spreaders, even if assume they are longer, if you step aside, this is gonna happen because it's all flexible 
and soft. If it's too short, you can kind of steer steer and guide the passenger with your body but if it's if it's longer you're separated from the passenger and if you, if you step aside the passenger may stay there so you have no ability to point the passenger to the direction where you need to run uh, this is why it's way better to have kind of a rigid construction here is an example that is uh, spreader bars that are way longer while the angle is kind of maintained uh, double strap reinforced uh, but the main point I want to talk about is this rigid part so when I need to step aside I'm kind of pulling the passenger with me if I need to turn to this and run that direction I can kind of steer the passenger and give him some some inputs where to run there are two basic simple solutions how to achieve it it's like an age shape a bar like this or maybe a u-shape bar uh, like that here are an ex a few examples uh, this is <clears throat> this is the age shape uh, bar in action and here are a few examples just to say uh, of, of a u-shaped bar. This u-shaped bar also has an advantage that the passenger can kind of rest his hands on there but mainly that the uh, and if you have an assistant that can just grab the bar and, and pull the passenger and, and you and help you with, with the takeoff. With these kind of spreader bars for pa tandem paramotor flights, there is one thing that you need to pay attention to, and namely that your ability to steer and guide the passenger during the takeoff phase is determined by the play that has. Namely, if these loops are very long, like, like on these bars, uh, there's a lot of play between your body and the bars and on the same in the same way with the bars and the passenger so even if you make a mo movement these if these loops are way too long they take away your guidance authority on the bars that I made for my personal use these loops are very short and limited so if I hook my uh, my own carabiner into it it's pretty inconvenient maybe it's just too short it's inconvenient to put the carabiner inside but once it's there it's very directly connected to my paramotor so as i move the bar instantly moves with me but some play is always there and there is a way how to reduce it even further and have a more direct kind of guidance or steering input onto the passenger and that is to attach the bar directly onto the paramotor like on this picture so here you have kind of a standard like a very simple simple bars uh, simple spreaders but here is a main bar that is attached directly onto the paramotor now this has a very good advantage there is a direct contact as as soon as you rotate your body it will instantly lead the passenger to the desired direction and on top of that the thrust that the motor uh, is, is kind of pushing you is directly transferred to the passenger so you are so with the motor uh, the motor is not only pushing you in your back but it's actually pulling the passenger as well uh, which makes it uh, easier to run uh, this is a this is a really cool setup so you have more direct guidance authority engine is pushing the passenger and uh, the assistance can uh, an assistant can grab it in the front bar the main problem with this kind of setup that it's all complicated there's so many things to attach which is not a problem if you have an assistant because first you need to 
uh, get yourself into the harness, strap in, and then you can uh, strap in the passenger. But then you don't have the reach and full control of it. You cannot do the pre-flight check and you need a trained assistant to do it for you. So let's do the final summary. So we have three basic types of uh, tandem spreaders, standard, par standard paragliding spreaders, simple H or U type spreaders that are attached directly into pilot's carabiner and uh, the last uh, type is the kind of U type spreaders that are attached onto the frame of the of the paramotor directly. Standard paragliding spreaders are way too short and give you pretty much non-existent room for fast running and I would not recommend for paramotor use. <clears throat> These kind of spreaders are long enough to give you more room or sufficient room. I would advise somewhere around 70, 75 centimeters in my personal experience is, is pretty, does a pretty good job. With the U-type spreaders, it's mostly adjustable because you can kind of pull the, uh, the passenger away from you. Uh, guiding the passenger with the age or U type spreaders attached to the paramotor, it's pretty good, but there is still a little play in between the paramotor and the bar, and uh, in between the bar and the passenger. Uh, most of the play is taken away if the bar is directly connected to the to the paramotor. So this is the best guidance you have, it's, and also the paramotor is pulling the uh, the passenger in front of you. Easy of use. Obviously, uh, this system is the most complicated one and you need an assistant to uh, strap in the, the passenger because first you need to get into this whole U-shaped thing, uh, strap everything in, you have it connected directly onto the paramotor and then you may, you may ask the assistant to, to hook in the passenger. Final conclusion. Standard paragliding spreaders only f only for paragliding. These kind of H, H or U shaped uh, spreaders that are connected directly into the into the carabiners are best for occasional tandems, especially if the passenger is already used to doing tandem flights. That's best. And I would recommend these uh, U-type spreaders that are attached to the to the main paramotor to the frame of the paramotor for tandems for business because you have the best launch characteristics, but you need an assistance for strapping in. Yes, sure. I only can encourage you to share the fun and joy of this sport with the others. Go for tandem flights. This seemed to be the very last topic in, uh, in, in the series, but I promise this is not the end of this classroom. If you have any suggestions, any questions that uh, you would like me to address, please leave a comment or send me in a message and I would happily do so. But a part of that, I do have quite a lot of ideas that I would add to this classroom series and it will be kind of a surprise so stay tuned hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so please hit the like button if you like this series and see you soon <laughs>